Greetings. Do you fear me? You have not to fear, for I bring you no harm. But if fear still lingers, prithee, sing me a song, for surely that will bring me comfort. But if there be courage in your hearts, I pray thee, linger a while. I shall appear before you, and my tragic tale shall now be unveiled. For it be well over two hundred years since my last appearance, and the time for the truth is nigh. For while the wrong against me is avenged, there is still much to be understood. My name is Mrs. Nellie Hooper Butler, though how I now regret that married name. In life, I loved my husband dearly. He charmed me, and I naively believed his every word. I agreed to give him my hand in marriage. And after, my belly soon swelled with his baby. But it was not to be. Childbirth was long and painful. There was an error. My babe did not survive. I was soon to follow my dear child. As I lay on my deathbed, my husband knelt beside me. I can still hear his anguished voice whispering to me, promising me to be in peace for he shall never love another woman. And like a fool, I believed him. Indeed, he went through a proper mourning period and kept his promise at first, but soon, painfully soon, another woman captures his attention. My husband, who has given me his loyalty, talks sweetly to another. He courts her and his every word to her is a dagger in my heart. He proves to be nothing more than a vile Judas a betrayer of my love. I then knew him for what he was. His promise was nothing more than a wisp of smoke in the breeze. I could not let such treachery go on. I returned on the eve of the second day of January in the year of our Lord, 1800. I haunted this cellar, the cellar of my husband's new love. I made myself known to them, not by appearing, but with my words. I put the whole town in an uproar. Just because they heard my ghostly voice, people came from miles around to hear me. They heeded my advice, and I gave them truthful predictions. I was greeted by strangers with disbelief, awe, and alarm. My fame was spreading across the countryside. Yet, yet the one I wished to notice me did not even acknowledge my existence. What's worse, he made plans to marry the wench. Do I not matter at all? Was his feelings for his own wife so insignificant he forgot his promise to her? How quickly man forgets what he does not wish to remember. I decided to show myself to the family. I decided to appear firstly to the son of Mr. Blaisdell, Paul. When he saw me, he fled instead of giving me the proper greeting I deserve. I don't let anyone disrespect me. Not Mr. Blaisdell's son, and definitely not his daughter. It's true I scolded Paul for his disrespect, but what I did to little Miss Blaisdell was much worse and much more satisfying to me. I followed the girl, hoping my presence would dissuade her from pursuing what did not belong to her, but the fools were blind to my hints and my feelings. I quickly realized stronger action needed to take place. I needed to get my husband to remember his promise. And what better way to remember a forgotten past than a repeated history? For I was granted a vision of the future. I saw what would happen should the girl marry my husband. I could have prevented the marriage, but then they would have continued courting without being married, or found some way around it. The only way he would be mine again was if she was gone. What woman would not do all she could to keep her husband's love? And what woman would not punish the, her husband when caught in acts of adultery? So, I encouraged the marriage. And kept silent about my vision. He broke his covenant with me and would be reminded the hard way. He would learn in the way a child learns not to touch fire by being burned. At the wedding festivities, I appeared to make my prediction. 
Nine months hence, the new wife would die in childbirth. I was, I was determined he would keep his word, so history repeated itself. Is it wrong for a woman to desire the devotion of her husband? Some claim my actions rash, but I saw only what was mine. 